Let's start tonight, shall we, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah 20 is a good spot to start with tonight. Uh, since we, we were in Jeremiah last week, but, uh, and we went through Jeremiah. Of course, we can't do an exhaustive study of him. But we did not look at chapter 20, which I wanted to look at. And chapter 20 really is a good lead into Lamentation. Lamentation, of course, very short book. It's only five chapters. Um, but it is what it is. It's a lamentation. It's what it is. The original meaning of the word is alas. And it was changed over the years. But in chapter 20, we shall read there. But let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for your goodness to us, Lord, today. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness to me today. Lord, for watching over me today. Lord, help me get home today. Uh, Father, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray again tonight that you'll meet with us in the few minutes that we have. Lord, I th that song, I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see, oh, but the dearest that Jesus loves me. Lord, what a thought that is. Father, I pray you'll bless in the few minutes that we have. Lord, I pray that you'll open your word to us. Lord, I realize again that Jeremiah preached to a hard-hearted people. Lord, much like Noah, who, Lord, found grace in your eyes, yet Lord preached and nobody would listen. Jeremiah preached and nobody listened to the point that he said he was through. And so, Father, I pray tonight that, Lord, you'll encourage us Lord, we need to be encouraged. Uh, Lord, in this world in which we live, we, we find the, uh, Lord, the political correctness has just gone crazy. Uh, anybody that does anything against what the politically correct thought is, is called all kinds of names. So, Father, I pray you'll encourage us. We cannot help but believe that, Lord Jesus, the trumpet shall sound at just about any moment, Lord, we do believe, Lord, I believe anyway, in your imminent return, that, Lord, it could be tonight, that, Lord, we would be taken, uh, Lord, it, it, but, Lord, if it's not tonight, then, Lord, help us to have a burden for people um, all around us, lost, without hope, Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, bless, we ask in these few moments in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Well, Jeremiah, of course, was known as the weeping prophet. We are talking about the five major, we, we call them the five major prophets, but really there are only four because they're Isaiah, Jeremiah, then Jeremiah wrote Lamentation, then Ezekiel and Daniel. And last week we looked at some of the things that Daniel said, but now in chapter 20, now Pasher, the son of Immer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, but Magor Misabib, for thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror, which is what the word means, um, a terror uh, to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword, uh, which means terror uh, around that person. So he said, All thy friends, they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it, and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city, which meaning Jerusalem, and all the laborers thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah, will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon." 
and thou pasture, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die, and thou shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. One of the things that Jeremiah had said, I believe in chapter 6, we saw it last week, that the priest had, had uh, prophesied lies, and here this pastor had now, there is an obvious break between verse 6 and verse 7. It, because then Jeremiah says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I, I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. I saw this, uh, somebody, uh, I just saw this. I don't even know where I read it, saw it. Somebody said, uh, God bless, God bless you. That was the, God bless you, and, and the, the person said you're an Islamophobic uh, because uh, you use God bless you. Um, we live in an unpolitically correct. But Jeremiah said, for since I, I spake, he said it was a reproach and a derision. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. Jeremiah said, I am through. He said, I am not doing this anymore. Uh, Pastor had had beaten him, put him in the stocks, had made him a reproach uh, in, in Judah. And Jeremiah just said, I'm not doing this anymore. But notice what it said. And, and here's why, you know, I believe in it, that Jeremiah was a free moral agent. He said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to speak anymore in your name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Jeremiah said, I simply could not speak. Now, the first six verses prophesy about Babylon coming in and, and destroying and taking away. So look over at Lamentations then. Lamentation is really five lamentations, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There are five lamentations or five laments that Jeremiah has because the Babylonians came and Jeremiah, not only speaking about it, but he evidently witnessed it. If you look at verse 13 and verse, through down verse 15 of chapter 1, it says this, From above hath he sent fire into my bones, and it prevaileth against them. He hath spread a net for my feet. He hath turned me back. He hath made me desolate and faint all the day. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand. They are wreathed and come upon us and have come upon my neck. He hath made my strength to fail. The Lord hath delivered me into their hands from whom I am not able to rise up. The Lord hath trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me. He hath called an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord hath trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in a winepress. Not only was... Uh, Jeremiah, not only did he prophesy about Babylon coming to destroy Jerusalem, which they did. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, of course, you'll remember, came in and, and besieged the city. He said in verse 1 of the same chapter, How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow? She, uh, she that was great among the nations and princes, among the provinces, how has she become a tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. Now, Jeremiah had warned them that this was going to happen. He, he told them that it was going to happen, but they, they absolutely passed, like we read in chapter 20 of, uh, of Jeremiah, 
They, they absolutely refused to believe it. Just like in Noah's day. Noah preached the coming judgment of God. And yet people simply did not believe it. it and it, if we preach the judgment of God today, and that God does judge nations, it is obvious that God judges nations. If you preach the judgment of God today, people look at you like you're crazy. God surely would not judge us individually or as a nation. Again, we, we, we think of that verse, blessed is that nation, any nation, whose God is the Lord. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. And if you tell people that, they think, well, just like in Noah's day, just like with Jeremiah, just like with any of the prophets, if you say anything about the coming judgment of God, people say, well, no, God would not do that. Why would God do that to us? Why would God do that? Well, why wouldn't God do that to us? And again, I realize that many things in the Old Testament are specifically to the nation of Israel and to the nation of Judah. But again, it is obvious that God does judge nations. And as you read the book of Isaiah, as you read the book of Jeremiah, you will find that there are specific judgments upon specific nations. Now, of course, there's not anything there about the United States. There was no United States. They didn't even know there was a United States. They didn't know there was a North America. But it is obvious that God does judge nations. And the wicked shall be turned in hell, and all nations that forget God. And so Jeremiah had preached about the coming judgment of God, yet they would not believe him. And so Judah has now been carried away into captivity. Look at chapter 2 and verse 12. Chapter 2 and verse 12. They say to their mothers, here's some things that were going on. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul poured out into their mother's bosom. Here the, the, under the, under the uh, Nebuchadnezzar besieged the city so that there was no food. There was nothing. Notice chapter, or verse 21. Verse 21 of the same chapter. It says this, The young and the old lie in the ground, lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. You know, even in the midst of all that. I mean, the Jeremiah sees that the hand of God has judged Judah. Look at chapter 4 and verse 10, what he says there. Chapter 4 and verse 10. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat and the destruction of the daughter of my people. They, they ate their children. The, 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 the besiegement was, was so bad, they had no food that they literally ate their own kids because there was nothing. I've said multitude of times that the reason people are not afraid of God is because they've never really seen what God could do if God wanted to do what he could do. But in, in the midst, really, of all the destruction and the judgment of God, Jeremiah sees hope. In chapter 3, we read this. We are probably all the way down through verse 44. Most of the time, we don't read down through verse 44. But it starts in verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Now, again, we have said the word compassion is more than just sympathy. Compassion not only sees what the problem is, but has the ability to fix it. So it says there in verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercy. It's, well, what is mercy? It is, it is uh, as, as Barnes wrote, it is love flowing freely. Um, 
It is of the Lord's mercies. And again, I realize, okay, we say, well, Lamentations is, is written about the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, the young people lie dead in the street. People ate their kids. It, it was as horrific as it sounds. But in, in that, Jeremiah said, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Jump real quick back. Look at uh, Psalm 145. Psalm 145. We'll come back right there, but Psalm 145. We read this about God. Psalm 145 and verse 8. The Lord is gracious. Psalm 145 and verse 8. The Lord is gracious. That's what God is. And full of compassion. Compassion, again, is the ability to fix the problem that we have. He is slow to anger and of great mercy. And we often wonder what God is like. What is God like? He is gracious. God is gracious. That's what God is. Uh, what, that, that little, God, God is gracious. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hand we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. God is gracious to us. God does for us. We say, well, what is mercy? Well, it's love flowing freely. We also say this, that mercy is God not doing to us what we deserve. God doesn't do to us what we deserve. And so he said he is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. Now, I know that, that some people say, well, no, God isn't good to everybody. No, God is good to all. He makes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Uh, there is that verse in Luke that says that God is, is good to all. He's even good to lost people. Now, they may not realize it, and they may not understand it, but God is good to everybody. Now, does he have to be? Absolutely not. It's said there in Lamentation as of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Would God have every right to consume us? Would God have every, every right to destroy us. Well, absolutely. But it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. As he said, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. God is good to all. I've said many times that is God under obligation to answer the prayer of lost people? Well, the only prayer that he is under obligation to answer is a sinner's prayer. I've read lately, well, there's no place in the Bible where there's a sinner's prayer. Well, I beg to differ. The publican stood on the street corner and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a, a sinner. Now, I, I think that's a pretty good prayer, Lord. I well, say, well, there's no verse in the Bible that says, Lord, I, I'm sorry, I all my sin, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Well, you're, you're right. There is no verse like that in the Bible. But there are verses Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, be merciful to me. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You think today what you did to offend God. Well, I really wasn't that bad today. Oh, but you were. The Bible says this, that, that, that we are guilty of, um, as David said, Lord, cleanse thou me of my secret sins. Now, the... That may mean, Lord, I'm doing things that people, nobody else knows about. And I'll bet that's probably true. But I think it also means this, that there are things that we do not do, that we're not even aware of, that we're doing. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. When you think about how gracious, and the Bible says here in Psalm that he is gracious, that he is slow to anger. He is a, a, he's full of compassion and of great mercy. That's what God is. God is that. Jump real quick back to Psalm 84. Psalm 84 and verse 11. Here again we have a description of God. 
In Psalm 84, and verse 82, let me see if I can find it. I wrote it down here. 84 and verse, oh, I am in Psalm. I'm in 84, and it says, uh, yes, it is, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good. The Lord will give that which is good. I think I'm in Psalm 84. Oh, I'm in Psalm 85. Psalm 84. 84 and 85. But that's okay. But then look at Psalm 84. For the Lord is the sun and the shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth seeking to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God wants to do for us. God loves us. Jump back to Lamentation. And it says there in verse, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. Ours do. We get irritated. We get, we get irritated. We get irritated when we're driving. We get irritated at people. You know, hurry up, slow down, get out of my way. What are you doing? Uh, we do. God does not. I know that people oftentimes have the idea that God is angry. That God is angry. And I know that there are verses, the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. And we can take that and we can make that our life. Well, God's angry with the wicked every day. But if God was not of tender compassion, of great mercy, we'd be consumed. Now, in verse 23, they are new every morning. Every single day. I have a question. What did God do for you today? He woke you up. And I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not being sarcastic about that, Daniel. But he woke you up. God woke you up today. His compassions, his mercies are new. Just like the manna that came down every single morning. There was new manna out there. New bread. New bread for the day. Um, what did God do for you today? Something happened to my car. I, I don't know what happened to the, the gray car. I, I was driving and it was like, um, it's like I hit a bale of hay. and went boom. Well, then I noticed that I was in reverse, I was in neutral, I was in drive, and on the Acura, you can have a manual shift. I was in manual shift, and I was in regular automatic shift all at the same time. And I'm thinking, huh? And there's this little light on. I don't even know what the little light was. So I, I, I called... I called Mike, you know, he had an actor, so I called him, I said, what do you think's wrong? Well, how do I know what's wrong? He said, I'm not even there. He said, I said, well, it's driving okay, it's not overheating, uh, it's driving all right, there's something funny, the way it's steering, uh, and so then I get home, and I, sh and I can't get it out of drive, I'm going get out of drive. So I called Mike back. He said, there's a little slot right next to it. He said, pry that thing open and stick the key in there and see if you can move the gear shift. And so I did. And it, I got it in, in park. And then, then I, I said, okay, now I can't get it out of park. I said, and I'm stuck in the middle of the driveway. He said, stick that key back down in there. So I stuck a screwdriver down in there, and I was able to get it. 
Well, you know, I was like, I was like 20 miles from the house when that happened. I'm, I'm not really sure what happened. Jamie just said, I wouldn't drive it if I were you. You know, I, I don't know what happened to it, you know. Oh, well, duh, thanks, you know. But I think about that. It is of his mercy. God in his mercy does for us. And, and you know what? We don't even think about it. We just go through it. I remember I was with Brother Grady one day down in uh, Rome. And we were looking for Francis Bellamy's grave. Now, if you don't know who Francis Bellamy is, Francis Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. And he is buried there in Rome. And Brother Grady was writing that one of his books, and he wanted to go down, take a picture of it. Well, the graveyard's kind of big there, and, and all of a sudden, there's somebody walking in the graveyard with a dog. Now, I, I can think of better places to walk your dog, but this person was walking their dog in the graveyard, and it's like they just appeared out of nowhere. And he, so he, he said, hey, can you tell us where uh, Francis Bellamy is buried? It's probably from here to the piano. It's about how far it was. She said, well, yeah, right there. And he, he turned and looked at me, and it's really the first time I ever thought about it. He said, isn't that just like the Lord Jesus to do something like that, to bring somebody in a graveyard walking their dog in the middle of the day, and it's like they just, we turned around and they, they were like gone. I, whether you like Van Eppie or don't like I, Van Eppie or not, I, I, yeah, he, uh, he was in a terrible car accident in uh, Belgium, where he and his, where his family is from, and he, he was in a terrible car accident, and his wife Rexella is laying on the road, she's lying on the road, and he's kind of leaning over, and uh, somebody taps him on his shoulder. And there he turns around, and there's this old man's there with a blanket. And he gives him the blanket, and he says to him, your wife's going to be okay. She's going to be all right. And he gives uh, Brother Van Eppie the, the blanket, and he puts it on his wife and turns around, and the guy's gone. And it's like, well, that's kind of freaky, preacher. No. No, it is because God does things for us every single day. And we don't even think about it. We don't even thank him for it. Uh, it says in that they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Then y'all said, well, he woke me up today. And I've heard people say, how are you doing today? Well, I'm on the right side of the dirt. I'm on the right side of it. Amen. You know, that's a good thing. We're on the right side of the dirt. And God woke me up today. God woke me up. God ever wake you up in the middle of the night? I woke up, I think, I think it was like 2 o'clock. I woke up at 2 o'clock this morning. And if I woke up, I'm laying there, and the first thing I'm thinking of, the first thing I think about, Lord, who should I be praying for right now? Who should I pray for right now? first person that came to mind was Tim, because Tim gets up at 2 o'clock and uh, goes out, goes, and he works at 2 o'clock. So I pray for Tim. And, you know, so, you know, God is so good to us. Notice, he says this in verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And you can read all the way down through verse 44 because in the midst of all the, of, of, all the horror, really, of, Bab of the Babylonians coming in and destroying Jerusalem and besieging the city and uh, the young men and women killed uh, by the Babylonians and uh, no food to the point that... Uh, 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 
Uh, moms eat their little children. Uh, amidst all that, Jeremiah sees hope. He realizes that the judgment of God has come upon Israel and Judah, in this case, because of their wickedness and because they would not repent, because they would not listen. Yet in the midst of the judgment of God, Jeremiah sees the goodness of God and how good God really, really is. That Oh, that we might, as Jeremiah writes, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord because his mercies fail not. They are new every day. Hey, before you go to bed tonight, think about something good God did for you today. Something God did. Because I'll guarantee, I'll guarantee you this. God did something good for you today. You might have missed it. If you weren't looking, you might have missed what God did for you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Lord, your goodness to us. Lord, how good you are to us. Oh, God, how good you are. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness unto the men. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, you're good to all. I know that lost people aren't looking that way. And I know there are people who say, well, God isn't good to everybody, only to the elect. But God, I, I really do believe that, Lord, you're good to all. And Lord, is that, I, I know you're under no obligation except to answer the sinner's prayer to a lost person. But Lord, I even believe you answer the prayer of lost people sometimes just because you're so good. Lord, you don't have to do that. But God, you're so good. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for your tender mercy to us. Lord, help us to be looking every day. Lord, every day what you do for us. Lord Jesus, how good you are to us every day. And we don't even stop to thank you. Lord, how ungrateful we are. Lord, help us to be grateful for all thy mercies because it is of your compassions that we are not consumed. Lord, thank you for another Wednesday night Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen.